Good morning, Kaalab! We are entering into the new season of Alab Pray Day and Alab Friday's word sharing with greater depths and broader sight. We will experience traveling back in time by studying the lives of significant men used by our Lord for the next couple of weeks. Today, let me introduce Jonathan Edwards. Jonathan Edwards was born on October 5, year 1703. He was the only son of his parents among 11 children. Being the fifth among 11 children, Jonathan Edwards entered Yale College at the age of 13. What's so special about it, you may ask? He entered college at the age of 13, one three. And during that time, kailangan mo maging fluent sa Latin, Greek, and Hebrew to enter a college. And not only that, he graduated valedictorian. And after that, he received his Master of Divinity in year 1722. Wow! At the age of around 18 to 19, Jonathan Edwards was an academician, an apologist, a pastor. Jonathan Edwards had a significant role in religious awakening that impacted English colonies in America. He was a calm preacher, but a bold one. Sobrang matapang talaga. One of his famous sermon was entitled, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. His fundamental belief in his sermons is justification by faith alone, which centered upon the idea that we, humans, are sinners and we need the forgiveness of God as an individual. Jonathan Edwards taught only in truth, in truth alone. Just as 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. We need not to be ashamed of telling and defending the truth just as Jonathan Edwards did. As a young person, Shall we all desire to know the God of the truth and desire to be used by Him to spark a revival? Revival begins from within. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Mighty God, our Savior, our Redeemer, the God who restores, the God who heals, the God who brings revelation and revival, Panginoon Diyos, Ikaw lamang po ang aming pinagkakatiwalaan sa oras na to. Lord, we put our hope within Your hands, Panginoon, for You alone know everything, Panginoon. You know our desire bilang mga kabataan. You know, Lord God, what we are after, what we are longing for, what we are looking for, Panginoon, bilang mga kabataan, Lord God. And right now, dalangin ko po, Panginoon, ang kapatawaran mo sa amin sa mga kabataan ngayon, Lord God, this generation of the youth. Father, I pray that you spare this generation, Panginoon, from, from your wrath, O God. Because the truth is, Lord God, kailangan ng consequences sa mga kasalanan. But Lord, I pray that may you let your grace, Panginoon, really abound, Panginoon. Lord, I pray, Panginoon, na kapatawaran mo kung may mga kabataang nakakalimot sa'yo, tumataligod sa'yo, Lord God, or binabaliwala ka, Lord God. Father, I pray for forgiveness, Lord God, to, to this generation of, of being prideful, self-centered, narcissistic. Lord Jesus, I pray, Panginoon, that you may extend further your grace, Panginoon. And Lord, I thank you, Panginoon, for this privilege to pray for and with those young people, Panginoon, who believes, Panginoon, that you will rescue, you will redeem their generation. Lord, salamat, Panginoon, sa pagkakataon na, na ito na manalangin sa iyo, Lord God. It is not about who we are or who I am, Panginoon, but it's all about your grace na pinagindapat mo po, Panginoon, na kami ay makapanalangin sa iyo, Lord God. Lord, thank you for your power. Thank you, Lord God, for your might. Lord, na simula nung great awakening from before, pinag-uusapan pa rin namin ito up to this day because it gives us hope, Lord God, that you can do it again, that you can revive us again, Lord God. You can revive this generation moving forward again, Panginoon. There's still hope 
Panginoon, may pag-asa pa kami, Lord God, because you are on our side, Panginoon. That's why right now, Lord God, we pray. We pray that you pour out your fire, Lord God, yung, yung fire mo na hindi nakaka-harm, yung fire mo, Panginoon, na nagbibigay ng passion, nagbibigay, Lord, ng buhay, nagbibigay, Lord, ng zeal, ng desire, Lord, to share you, Panginoon, to, to share your word, your gospel, Panginoon, to really talagang pangalagaan, mabuti yung paghawak sa salita mo, Panginoon, and not to neglect, Lord, meeting together, edifying one another, Lord God. Lord, we pray, Panginoon, and I pray, Lord, sa bawat kabataan na nakikinig at nanonood ngayon, Panginoon, dalangin ko po na ganun din ang maging puso ng aking kapatid, just like Jonathan Edwards, Panginoon. Really to have this great and deep desire, first and foremost, to know you. To know you deeply and intimately, Lord God. And Lord, ultimately, Panginoon, dalangin ko itong mga kabataan na ito ay gagamitin mo, Lord God, to spark and start a revival from within their hearts to their families, to their communities, Panginoon, and to reach more people, Panginoon, for your glory and for your kingdom alone, Lord God. Maraming salamat po muli, Panginoon. Sa iyo po namin ibinabalik ang pinakamataas ng pagsamba Pasasalamat at luwalhati, Panginoon. This is our cry of desperation. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. We still have a lot more to talk about the life of Jonathan Edwards. Mamayang 4pm, we will be talking about his family. And we will be praying for our church, family, and community. Revival fire to us all. Kaalab. See you! Magandang hapon mga kaalad as we continue to our synchronous praying featuring God's mighty generals we will continue to get to know Jonathan Edwards Let me ask you this question Naalala mo pa ba yung araw na tinanggap mo si Jesus Christ bilang Panginoon at tagapagligtas? If so, share mo naman sa ating comment box kung kailan ito with a joyful and a thankful heart. During the summer in 1721, Jonathan Edwards received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. At mula noon ay nakita niya ang malaking pagbabago at radikal na paghulma sa kanyang mga karanasan at kanyang buhay sa pagkakakilanlan niya kay Jesus. He was raised in a family with a pastoral heritage. And when he was 38 years old, in a church in Enfield, Connecticut, July 8, 1741, he delivered one of the greatest sermon entitled, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And it became known as the first America's Great Awakening. Sinabi ng isa sa kanyang mga tagahanga na si Franklin Benjamin, It seemed as the whole world were growing religious, so that no one could not walk through the town in an evening without hearing psalms sung by different families in every street. Wow! What an amazing event! Declaring the salvation of the Lord through singing! And I believe bawat isa sa atin ay nangangarap ng isang pamilya at komunidad na sumasamba, nananalangin, at naglilingkod sa Panginoon. But the question is, how do we pray for them? With this hope in our hearts, let us anchor our faith to His Word from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 to 19. It says there, I pray that that out of His glorious riches, He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and how high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. May we all experience and encounter this beyond measure love found in Jesus. Let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. 
We are here this afternoon, Lord, standing in awe of your grace and love for us. We worship you, God, and glorify your name. Father, right now, we remember our families, every family represented here by May Kaalat. Lord, by your grace and power, we lift to you these families. Lord, we ask for your visitation to be upon every home, and families will encounter and receive your love and embrace your salvation. Father, in the name of Jesus, nakikita mo po ang puso ng aking mga kaalam on how they are desiring na makasama ang kanilang mga pamilya sa pagsamba sa iyo. Right now, God, we claim in the name of Jesus the day of revival in our family. Holy Spirit, visit us. Touch our lives, O God. Touch the heart of our families in Jesus' name. Lord, we anchor our faith in you alone. Trusting your faithfulness and sovereignty over us. Thank you, God. And Lord, we pray for our community. Lord, mahabag ka sa amin. Lord, we ask for your revival fire to cleanse our society from anything that doesn't glorify you. Forgive us, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. We are here with my kaalab, Lord God, standing on the gap for our community, Lord. Matagpuan ka, makilala ka, at maramdaman ng aming lipunan ang iyong pagbamahal. Thus, every people will see how good you are, how compassionate you are to, to them and for them, so that they will experience your salvation in Jesus' name. May you be glorified in every place of our society, of this world, Lord. May your name be lifted high. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord in Jesus' name. And God, we are asking for your revival fire. Holy Spirit, fill us up. We are opening our hearts before you, before your presence, O Lord. Saturate us with your fire, with your love, and with your presence. Lord, Use us mightily, just as how you use Jonathan Edwards, or even greater than him, Panginoon. By your grace, Lord, we want to see families serving you. We want to see people that are sold out for you. Thanks, confessing that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, O God. Lord, we ask that you first revive our hearts, our souls, and our spirits. Changes from within, Lord. Create a new heart in us. Give us hunger and thirst and desperation to know you more and to love you more. Thank you, God, for redeeming us from a miry clay into something new, something beautiful, Lord. Let this gratitude in our hearts touch every life of people around us. We seal this prayer, Lord in the most precious blood and the powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. God is a call to our society, community, and our family, and your family. And we can only see that if we, like Jonathan Edwards, put the gospel into practice and emphasize its truth and believe that life is meaningless without a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen! Maraming salamat sa pagsama sa pananalangin, mga kaalab. We are so blessed to journey with you kasama ang God's mighty generals in our church history. Let the revival fire grow in our hearts starting today. Kita kits mamayang 8pm sa ating word sharing on starting over at 11pm in our last synchronous praying segment. Revival fire to us all, kaalab! Praise God sa natapos nating word sharing session with Pastor Sita sa ating hashtag Alab Fridays. I'm sure marami tayong natutunan at mga resolutions sa gagawin after hearing the message starting over. Speaking of resolution, kamusta ang New Year's resolution mo kaalab? So far so good ba? O so far so far? Alam mo ba na si Jonathan Edwards ay gumawa rin ng resolutions in life? Yes! Nung siya ay teenager kagaya mo at ng mga ilang kaalab natin na nakatune in ngayon. When Jonathan Edwards was 18 or 19 years old, nagpunta siya sa New York at nag-MA doon habang nagpapastor sa isang church. 
At nung panahon na iyon, kagaya mo, ay nag-iisip-isip din siya kung ano ang nais niyang mangyari sa kanyang nag-iisang buhay. Kaya naman, ginawa niya ang usual niyang ginagawa, ang pagsusulat. He began writing his resolutions from 1722 to 1723. Wow! Amazing, di ba? Kung tayo ay nag-create every year ng resolution, iba si Jonathan Edwards. It took him one whole year just to finish his resolutions. Kaya naman, umabot ito ng 70. Yes, kaalab! 7-0. At tinawag itong 70 resolutions of Jonathan Edwards. Bakit nga ba gumawa siya ng napakaraming resolutions? It began when he recognized this. Being sensible that I am unable to do anything without God's help, I do humbly entreat Him by His grace to enable me to keep these resolutions so far that they are agreeable to His will for Christ's sake. You only live once! And for Jonathan Edwards, he was resolved to live his one life to the fullest. A life that counts and not just putting in time. A life of obedience and glorifying to God. At syempre, it can only happen by the grace of God. As 2 Peter 3.18 says, But continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, now and forever. Amen! Handa ka na bang malaman kung ano-ano ang mga resolutions na sinulat ni Jonathan Edwards? Don't worry ka alam! Di natin iisa-isahin yon. Here are just three from Jonathan Edwards' resolution that we would be praying to God to be evident in our life at maging resolve sa ating mga puso. Una, a life glorifying to God. I will do whatever I think will be most to God's glory and my own good, profit, and pleasure. For as long as I live, I will do all these things without any consideration of the time they take. Pangalawa, a life of repentance. To confess honestly to myself all that I find in myself, whether weakness or sin, and if it's something that concerns my spiritual health, I will also confess the whole case to God and implore Him for all needed help. At pangatlo, a life founded in the Word of God, that nothing other than the Gospel shall have any influence at all on any of my actions, and that no action shall be, even in the very least circumstance, anything under the Gospel declares, demands, and implies. Tara, manalangin tayo. Father God, you are the God of revival fire. We witness how you mightily move in the life of Jonathan Edwards, and we believe that you are the same God who is moving in our lives today. Forgive us, Lord, for all our selfish desires, pride, and worldly attachments. Cleanse us, Lord, and purify us. Break our hearts, Lord, for all the things that break your heart. Para makita namin, Lord, na ang buhay na ito na ipinahiram mo sa amin ay hindi para sa amin o para maabot ang aming mga personal na pangarap, kundi para sa iyong kaluwalhatian at kapurihan lamang. Lord, create in our hearts a deep hunger for your presence and diligence in studying your word. Na Lord, na hindi namin hahayaan na ang aming emotions ang magkompel sa amin in making decisions in life. Resolve it in our hearts to make your word the very guide and compass of our lives. To make your word the very foundation of every young people's conviction. Father, we implore for your revival fire to consume us tonight. For unless you come, we will just stay the same. Revisit us, Lord, and realign our hearts' desires to your will. Rule over our hearts, Lord. Rule over our lives. Use us mightily for the advancement of your kingdom and to ignite revival to every family and community that we represent. All by your grace, we can do this, and this is all for your glory alone. This is our prayer of desperation. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Kaalab, 
Jonathan Edwards died at the age of 55 when his immune system failed after receiving smallpox inoculation. His life is indeed short, pero nakita natin na ibinigay niya ito ng buong-buo para kay Kristo. Kaya ano pang hinihintay mo, kaalab? Tonight, I encourage you to get your notebook and pen. Start to revisit and realign your resolutions in life by having one goal in mind. To live your one life, resolve to glorify God. Revival fire to us all, mga kaalab!